With all of the hype around AI recently, it's not hard to imagine that some of you may be falling into a sort of malaise, and sometimes I fall victim to this myself. You may tend to think that, well, in a few years, AI is going to have everything sorted out. It's going to know how to do everything. What room is there for someone like me? Well, I'm here to tell you that this is doomer type thinking, and I do not condone it. I do not support it. I do have some suggestions in this video for how you're going to stay relevant in the era where AI is indeed more powerful and is indeed coming for your job. I have some suggestions for you, and of course, the answer lies in books. So the first thing I want to recommend to you is that you're going to need to pick up a low-level language. You're going to need a deeper understanding of how the metal works, particularly if you want to stay one step ahead of our robot overlords. Now, I have a book here uh, that will facilitate precisely that. This is the C programming language. Now, it doesn't have to be C. You don't have to learn C if you don't want to be an old fuddy-duddy like me. You can learn C++, Rust, Go, any low-level language. Heck, go for a straight assembly if you really want, if you love pain, that is. But nonetheless, you have to learn a low-level language. You're going to have to get closer to the metal to learn how all of this hardware works. The reason is, is that it's going to make you a better programmer overall. By understanding the fundamentals of how something like, say, Python is written, you're going to be able to write better Python. You're going to be able to write better code. And let's face it, as someone pointed out in the comments of my last video, the code that these LLMs are outputting may be functional in some instances, but it's not the highest quality code and it's not free from bugs. And having a deeper insight into how the metal works, so to speak, is going to help you to debug that and to be a better programmer overall and keep you more relevant in the years to come. Now related to that topic of how the metal works is something like this. This is a very simple primer book. It's only, I don't know, a couple hundred pages long, if that. Yeah, 160 some pages. It's very short, it's very brief, it's an easy read, and it covers the gamut of topics you need to know for computer science. Now, if you have a computer science degree, something like that is gonna be, you know, uh, completely useless. You already know the fundamentals of computer science, but many of you are probably coming from a background in other fields, maybe physical sciences, social sciences, data science, something where you don't have a strong foundation in computer science per se. And reading a book on that isn't going to make you an expert, but it will at least fill in some of the gaps in your knowledge. And it's going to help you to write better code because if you understand, um, you know, all of the science that has come before, the problem you're trying to solve, you're going to be able to solve it a little bit better. There's no need to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. The next thing you're going to do is to go really low level with electronics. I actually think that uh, presently, uh, obviously stuff runs on the GPU and it does quite well, but I don't think GPUs are going to be the medium on which AGI is developed. I actually think we're going to hit a sort of saturation point where we're going to get incredibly strong, narrow AI, but not something that's a little bit more general that's able to solve problems in the way that a human can. And so being able to work your way around hardware, understand how hardware works, perhaps even design it yourself, is going to give you the edge in the years to come. And this is one book that I've seen recommended. Uh, it's from the 1990s. Don't want to deter you. Not a lot has changed in terms of fundamentals, at least, with respect to electronics. And if this is now, a little bit too easy for you at some point. Then there's always the art of electronics. This was kind of a canonical textbook for those of us in physics, where it has everything from the fundamentals all the way up to complex circuit design. It's a little bit dated as well, but again, the fundamentals don't change, and you can't understand the cutting edge if you don't have a strong grasp of the fundamentals. The next thing you're going to learn is mathematics. Now, obviously, you need to know calculus. You obviously need to know linear algebra if you want to do machine learning, because after all, AI as it stands now is basically just linear algebra, matrix multiplication with some gradient descent thrown on for good measure. So learning mathematics outside of linear algebra and gradient descent is going to give you an advantage. In particular, something like Bayesian statistics is going to help you with data analysis and data science. If there's any data scientists down uh, watching this, you can comment how useful that is, but I suspect you use it pretty frequently if you're doing any type of real statistics. So just to recap briefly before I move on, you need a low-level language. You need a strong foundation in computer science if you don't already have it. You need a foundation in uh, electronics because hardware and low-level work is going to be key in the new era of uh, artificial intelligence developers. And I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest something else for you guys. Um, it's not enough to just be a developer of very simple things. I would, and I would classify AI as pretty simple. It's not all of that complicated, right? And in fact, I've had this thought experiment. We could actually do 
we could actually make our own LLM just out of people, everyone writing the calculation on a sheet of paper with a slide ruler if we wanted. Uh, there's nothing magical about it. It's just linear algebra and calculus. Now you will need, I think, at some point to become an expert in a sort of perpendicular field that is quite difficult. For myself, since I have a background in physics, I've chosen quantum computing. I've started studying this recently. I have a background, obviously, in quantum mechanics. I have a background in computation. So it, combining the two seems to be a reasonable bet for me. For you, that could look like something different. If quantum computation isn't something you feel like tackling, there are hundreds of other topics out there on the frontier of science that uh, marry together multiple different fields uh, to make you an interdisciplinary badass. And that's kind of the theme of this video is uh, people who are very narrowly specialized in one particular thing, say just machine learning or artificial intelligence, or in my case, reinforcement learning, uh, we're not going to survive in the new era because the AI has, the large language models in particular, have the capability to write code that's improving over time, hopefully, uh, in any one particular field, and it can do it across many different fields. So if you want to actually master this and stay ahead of the curve, you have to be interdisciplinary and have deep expertise in the multitude of areas. Anyway, these are just my thoughts. This is what I'm doing for myself. If you feel like this is stupid, by all means, let me know in the comments. Uh, you can call me an old fuddy-duddy for recommending C, and I wouldn't even argue with you necessarily. Um, but nonetheless, let me know what you guys think, how you're planning to stay ahead of our robot overlords, because... Frankly, it's getting a little bit, a um, little bit frantic out there. Uh, the hype seems to have died down a little bit, but uh, make no mistake, the era where AI is taking over low-level junior jobs is definitely coming, and we need to stay ready for that. Let me know what you think. If this resonates with you, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.